Welcome back, everybody. Today is Wednesday, and it's time to do battle with the generator just two days before we're supposed to leave to go to Kentucky. Now, this Onan generator is a major pain in the ass to get out of this trailer, and it's even more difficult to work on once you get it out. First things first, you've got to disconnect all the electrical, disconnect the fuel line, and then remove the exhaust system off of it before you can hoist it out of the side of the trailer. Luckily, I've got forks for my skid steer that we use to move this thing around once we get it out of the trailer. And since the shop's clear full, Jeremy decides just to work on it out in the driveway. So while he's tearing it apart, I go down to see Mark to pick up a new belt. And I think Mark was glad that it was me to come pick up parts instead of my brother. So those guys down at A1, they get quite a kick out of Jeremy. And Tyler starts telling me about teasing Jeremy about doing maintenance on his own stuff. You're high and mighty, fix everything brother, Uncle Bucko. Refuses to fix the back glass on his hatch on his truck for $36. Well, in Jeremy's defense, there's no sense fixing it now because the glass fell out of it. And then Mark hits me with an Australian flag. I didn't order an Australian flag. Where did this come from? From halfway across the world. Well, no shit, it's an Australian flag, but how did you get it and why is it here for me? There were two guys that stopped in and because they heard we had a lot of stuff and he also watches the channel. From they, Australia. From Australia, right. So they stopped in, I was able to hook them up and they hooked you up with a flag for, for the show. Big fans. He actually tried to stump the chump, but it didn't work. Tried to stump the chump, but it didn't work. So I'm standing there talking to Mark about this guy from Australia and then his phone rings. It's Uncle Bucko. Along here, Philip McGillicuddy. What taking what, so long for what? Chop, chop. I'm ready for my belt. Poor old Mark. He could have stuff ready before Jeremy even knew he needed it, and it still wouldn't be quick enough. Whoever designed this flaming pile of shit really needs to have their head examined. You have to tear this thing completely apart just to service the belt and the bottom. Anyway, while Jeremy's working on his generator, I took the John Deere up to the front porch and picked up two sets of brand new Hoosiers that I'd gotten from Garage Built Racing, Joseph Thomas. We couldn't find any tires the other day, and it just so happens that Joseph saw my post on Facebook and had plenty of them in stock. So he shipped them out and had them to us here the next day. We greatly appreciate that. And speaking of deliveries, the UPS truck pulls in just a few minutes later, and it wasn't the usual driver. He didn't know what to think of being on camera. He thought he did something wrong. But it turns out he had a really nice package that vicky has been waiting on, a whole box full of her brand new Old Man's Garage mint green tumblers. She's been waiting on these things and she's excited to finally have them. And unbelievably in record time, Jeremy has the belt installed on this generator and it's ready to go back in the trailer. And thank goodness Kenny Powers showed up, so we've got an extra helping hand to get it in the trailer, because putting it back in is a hell of a lot more difficult than taking it out. Kenny has to lay underneath of it to pick up on it, and Jeremy works from up top trying to slide it in on the rails. After fighting it for about 15 or 20 minutes, they finally got it set back in the compartment. We fired it up just to make sure it works, and voila, we've got lights and ice cold air conditioning again. Once we knew that the generator was fixed, it's time to change oil and filter and service it before the weekend. So while the oil's draining out of the generator, Kenny goes ahead and checks all the tires and finds three more tires that need to be replaced, and some of the wiring got destroyed when this tire blew out on us last Saturday night. So Kenny gets all the wheels and tires off and makes repairs to the wiring for me before he heads home for the day. And then Thursday morning, Billy's here bright and early to get his Nova loaded up to haul it down to 10 soldiers to do some work on the rear suspension. While Billy's down there at 10 soldiers, I want to take these tires down to Bowman Goodyear and drop them off to get them replaced. And I'd like to try and get some work done on the Malibu today while the Nova's out of the shop. So I run into Jigs and pick up some parts for Billy and another Posi unit for the 10 bolt and make another trip down to see Mark. You've wiped me out of gear, Luke. So as you can see, it's been a very hectic last two days. Well, month, month, year, life, I don't know. It's been very busy around here. Right now, Kenny Powers is in there putting out another fire, almost literally. Uh, one of the alcohol drums that we put in there a couple days ago, sprung a leak so it was leaking alcohol all over the inside of the trailer so kenny's in there pumping out what's left in the drum into another drum so we can mark that drum as a leaker how you doing kenny powers 
warm. It is a little warm. It was definitely warm yesterday. It was like 92 degrees out there yesterday while you were swapping tires and getting that generator in and out. Did you ever find out where this thing's leaking? Yeah, I patched it the other day and it seems to be holding, but we're going to go ahead and switch them out yeah. just to be safe. This will be a burn barrel from here on out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and check in on Uncle Bucko. So as you can see, we got the Malibu up on the lift and I got a new posi carrier for it today. We're gonna go ahead and reuse the ring and pinion in it. I'm just gonna patch this thing up so we can cruise it and drive it for right now. Tess and Tony are coming in this, uh, this coming week and they're gonna stay the weekend uh, with us while we go to KD for Olympia and Happy's race next weekend. And that's their rental car. So I don't wanna leave them hanging. Are you getting anything done? Can you stop breaking stuff? That would be handy. I feel as though the installation of these parts is the possible culprit no. to its failures. No. The is no. that not possible? It's the Nimrod behind the wheel. I have noticed that Kenny Powers rear end never breaks, but you've never worked on Kenny Powers rear end. Also, you've never driven Kenny Powers car. Oh, yeah, yes. Indeed, I have. Only the one that you work on seems to have a problem. Coincidence? I'm certain that I'm 99.9% .9 of the problem, but that last tenth of a percent is definitely there. What are you doing? What is that? I it's figured, upside down. I figured it was your car. My goodness. This thing's gonna leak like a sieve. Once we finally got this thing back together, it was time for a test drive. You're going for the test drive. Oh, yay. That way you can give your warranty stamp of approval. So me and Uncle Bucko jump in the old Malibu, back it outside, and we head up the road. And by this point, I'm figuring it'd be a God-given miracle if this ring and pinion doesn't make a crap ton of noise. So far, so good. It's quiet, same as before. Yeah. Like it never happened. <laughs> I can't hardly believe it, but this thing gets quieter every time we swap the carrier. But for quality control purposes, we still need to test it. <laughs> it's fun. That's good. <laughs> I can't hardly believe this thing knocks the tires off from a roll like that. It never used to do that on gas. It's perfect. Well, you're both still alive and the car drove in under its own power, so... Jeremy gives his stamp of approval. It's under warranty. This one I feel is gonna last a little longer. But I ordered my 90, so I know now that it's not gonna I suggest you don't break into your 90s here. So after Jeremy and I went over all the warranty information, I put a little tweak to the carburetor, topped off the air conditioning, and then me and June Pup headed down to the speedway to top this thing off with a fresh tank of E85. Now this is the first time I've had an opportunity to cruise this car around with the larger jets in the front of the carburetor. It had 80s out of the box and it now has 84s. And it's a little bit ratty driving it around town, but it sounds really good and it's got excellent throttle response. Hopefully within the next week or so, I'll have some time to take this car to a test and tune session and dial it in properly. However, that may have to wait until after we get the nine inch put in it. Well, here we are, welcome back. It's Thursday night and Billy is still not back yet. He is on his way home from Kentucky. Uh, I heard from him earlier today that they replaced all the Heim joints and did some bracing on the wishbone underneath the back of his Nova. They scaled it and got the car all set up. So I think the Nova is almost ready. We still need to put new set of tires on. They're laying right there. Uh, and we need to change oil in it when he gets home. Uh, it's about a two hour, two and a half hour drive from 10 soldiers back up here. So he's on his way right now. I think, I hope Tommy has the Falcon ready. He was supposed to put tires on that today and finish getting it ready. Um, Vicky's got the Suburban ready. We're going to tow one of the cars down there on the open trailer behind the Suburban and we'll use Billy's Cummins to hook to my big trailer, which it's ready. And as you can see, Kenny Powers has been here. He's got the shop all cleaned up. And Harley was here today and she helped get the trailer packed up, helped Vicki. 
we've got everything we need, I think, ready to go. And guess who's here? <laughs> hey, I had a good day. Good. I, got a, I took today off, got a lot done. Harley and I knocked out all kinds of stuff. So she was know. very helpful today. Oh, yeah. Like, we got a lot done. Yeah. I like for once, I think on the eve of an event day, I'm not going to be up until 2 in the morning. I Good. think I might be in bed by midnight. Good. Hopefully. Good. So we've already had dinner, and we're just waiting on Billy to get home with the Nova, and then he's going to want to probably eat dinner. And then we're going to change tires, change oil, and finish getting ready to go, I guess. Right? Yeah. <sighs> the only thing I have left to do, and I had to wait until it cooled down, was load the food. Oh, like, yeah. Some of the stuff I didn't want to melt or get, you know, because the trailer was hot. So right. now that it's dark, I can load the food, I can load our clothes, and that's pretty much it. And did you want to talk about your tumblers? Oh, look. Get close. Look. The old man's garage. With a C10 in my favorite color. They're so cute. You were dancing a jig in here earlier over that stuff. <laughs> you yep. look like the groundhog off of that movie. What was that movie? Caddy was Shack. Caddyshack. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got them on the website, so. They're up there. And don't worry if they run out, I'll get more, but uh, they're on there now. Hi, Scrabbers. <laughs> Hi, June Pup. So you want some more details? I know. I oh kinda, yeah, I want more details. <laughs> you love the details. I'll just quickly again. So we're headed to Kentucky Dragway. It's in Clay City, Kentucky. Um, the racing Friday night starts at 8 p.m. and the racing Saturday night starts at 8 p.m. I think it's twenty dollars you get in one night and twenty five the other. But uh, kids are like half off. Um, I think I read six and under free, something like that. But uh, it's gonna be a good time. They've got food trucks, um, concessions, lots of vendors will be there. We'll have our merch there. Um, it's gonna be a good time. I mean, it's not, you're out of the heat of the day by then. Well, we're looking forward to it, I can tell you that. Oh yeah, yeah, so come on out and see us. It was 7.30 this morning when Billy pulled out of the driveway, headed to Kentucky to 10 soldiers race cars. It was 10.45 tonight when he pulled back in the driveway with a car. And we've still got three or four hours worth of work to do to this thing. And I don't even think Billy's had dinner. He may not have even had lunch. It was about 10 after 11 by the time Billy pulled the Nova in the shop and started putting it up on the lift. I figured he'd want to go in and get something to eat, but instead, he got straight to work. First thing he needed to do was change oil, and Vicki came out to see what all that they had worked on down at 10 Soldiers today. While Billy's working on cutting the oil filter apart, I went ahead and started pulling the wheels and tires off. One, we need to change the slicks on the back, and two, he wants to change out the steering arms on the front because the arms that are on the car tend to want to tow in just a little bit when the front suspension's at full travel. I'm really proud of Billy and Rob for all the work they've done on this car. And I really want to see them do well this weekend on the first trip out. But he has got a mountain of work left to do. And by the time he gets it done, he's not going to have any sleep. And I probably won't either, to be honest with you. But if you want to race and compete at this level, this is what it takes. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and sacrifice. So that's going to about do it for tonight, guys. We're still out here working. Uh, we've still got quite a bit of work to do left tonight. But I need to get this video edited, finished up, uploaded, so we can get back to work. So see you all at Clay City, Kentucky this weekend. Mountain Park Dragway, 
Kentucky Dragway? Is Kentucky. It? They call it Kentucky Dragway now, but it used to be Mountain Park, Clay City, Kentucky. Good night, guys.